we're going to finish up Steve's new lawn in this episode. We've got to grade this steep bank, spread some topsoil, sow the seed, and apply some straw to the top. Let's get started. Steve does a really good job with a box blade. He handles it very nicely, definitely a lot more effective than I am. This is a tricky spot as it's a really steep bank. He's trying to push that clay over there, but not get close enough to tip his tractor over. On the other hand, with Vinny, I have no fear. I just barrel off in there and drive right on over it. I don't think we've shown much steep slope operation with the Ventrac this year, but that is probably its number one feature, is able to handle these slopes. This one was about 20 degrees. The slope meter began to beep here at one point. I think that's near its rating with single tires. With duals, it's rated up to 30 degrees. And yeah, we've had it on worse. The center of gravity is just so low that it's not very tipsy at all. You can kind of see that once you begin to look closely. All of the heavy parts are way down low. Well, except for Mr. Cheeseburger there. I should ask Steve where he got his tractor experience. That's a beautiful job of spreading that topsoil. While he was spreading, I just kept running the vent track in circles. After each bucket full, I would follow him around and spread it out. You can see that I'm mixing some of the clay back in with the topsoil. That's not intentional, but it really won't hurt anything. At least there'll be a nice topsoil mix in the top few inches here. At this point, I'm raising the power rake up so that it just touches the surface. This will allow me to brush those bigger clods off to the side. This is the same approach you use to get rocks off to the side. Notice I have the power rake at an angle, and it just kind of bounces heavy clods and rocks right off to the right side. And I'll go around in a circle here until I push them off to each side, and I suspect Steve will handle them from there. I think we could have made a windrow of them in the middle and ran the tiller over them one more time. Probably got rid of most of them. Now we're starting to see. This is the Ventrac Aerovator Cedar. It's meant for overseeding an existing grass. Now, it looked to me like I was pushing up an awful lot of dirt. You are. It's coming over the top. Like, you got a pretty good mound right here now. Let's see, is there any adjustment on that? Up here may be a lot fluffier than the rest of it. The roller can, I can put the roller down, but I'm not sure that that'll help me keep from fluffing it up in front. Okay, so I've got a big pile there. Yeah, we can rake that back, but... Yeah. Okay, you may have to. Um, I thought, now some of this area up here I won't be able to run with the cedar down, I'll, but I'll still sprinkle some seed. Okay. I think I'm gonna have to try to put that roller down or something. Oh my goodness! The roller is just not big enough, it's just burying itself. I think you want to take a pass over here, I think it'll be totally different. Okay. I think you may be right. Because that's had a lot more traffic on it. And, okay. And it's not, this is really deep with topsoil. Really soft too. Yeah. Yeah, it's so fluffy and I think dry. we probably got enough seed here, though. I, th I do, too. Looking at it, I think so. It's almost impossible to see the seed coming out, from a distance especially. If you're right there by it, you can see it falling, but it's hard for us to effectively show it to you on video.
So I think we've got the seed going pretty good. I've tried to go over it a couple different ways. Um, I had a little trouble with it wanting to pile up in front of the roller. So I've done three things, I think two of them good, but the first was lowering the roller so that the teeth don't grow in the ground so far. I'm not actually sure that was a good plan because that made it so the PTO didn't want to engage as much. This is all spring loaded here, and, and so if there's not enough weight on it, the PTO doesn't engage the shakers. But I found out that the shakers seem to be causing part of the problem, stirring up the ground so much. So I've actually just turned the PTO off, and I'm running it without the PTO at all. And I think that is item number two. Item number three is I turned some weight transfer on to the tractor so that it doesn't push down as much. Between those three, I've got it operating the way I want. I think I'm going to have to You want to add up. some? No, I think I may have to crank it up a little bit. I'm getting, I'm getting bored of going over it before it gets done uh, seeding it. A bigger number, I think, makes a... I talked to Steve about this slope here. He's pretty sure he can get his zero turn over that. We'll see how it goes. If we need to improve it, we'll come back next season. Now to summarize the adjustments I made to get the cedar uh, to work properly in these conditions, I'm a little frustrated that I didn't think of the weight transfer first. I think I could have left the roller in its original position, and by shifting the weight transfer, I think everything would have been fine. But that's the way it goes in the real world. A lot of times you don't get everything adjusted perfectly until you almost get done. Moving on, what do you think of this straw blower? I love this thing. This particular model has a little Honda engine on it that's powering the blower, and then it's, uh, I don't know if it's mounted to a pallet or if it's kind of built in to be used on pallet forks. So it's just sitting on the front of the tractor for easy transport. I missed the first part of this straw spreading as I was doing some final grading on the other side of the lot. But I thought I'd come over here and stick my nose in it now. Maybe I could poke that straw down in there a little bit so it wouldn't blow away. <laughs> get him. I think Steve bought several lots to get sufficient space to put this building. For instance, where he's blowing straw there now used to be what they called a monument company. They sold headstones for graves. Of course, it had been closed for many years. I'm sure like many other businesses, it's been consolidated to the larger towns. And right up on the corner, the front part of the building, was the home furniture store. One of my classmates' father owned it. In the top right of the screen, you'll see my elementary school, actually where I went K through 8. Behind those white walls and windows up there would have been where I spent my 7th or 8th grade year. If we were going to do this over 5 acres or more, I think Evan and I would have to increase our efficiency at feeding this unit. We couldn't keep up moving this tractor, fetching hay from around front with the other tractor and Evan doing all the feeding. We could have come up with something better, but we were almost done. This went fast. I'm now a fan of the straw blower approach rather than the netted blanket approach because they're so expensive and they leave that string or it seems like nylon netting in your yard. It's supposed to disintegrate, but it doesn't very fast. Now, for those of you without a farm background, you probably hear me saying straw and you're thinking, hey, for some folks that uh, live in suburbia and maybe the only experience they get next to any sort of bales of anything is when they go on a, quote, hayride in the fall. Hayrides are a lot of fun, but they're somewhat frustrating to farmers because we don't use hay for hayrides. We use straw. Straw is usually this golden color, and it's the byproduct of a harvest, like a wheat harvest. The wheat has already died. We harvest the seeds, and the stems are what's left, and we call that straw. Animals don't eat the straw. They use it for bedding. Hay, on the other hand, is used for feed, for horses, cattle, and some other livestock, typically legumes or grasses that are cut while they're green, and then they're allowed to dry in the field. We showed you that process earlier this summer on our channel. It was a long day, very long day. But I think we've got it. 
ready to go. It looks great. No guarantees on grass. Got to come back and mow it. Let's, I, I'm worried more about it coming up. Uh, I don't have any doubts. <laughs> we are perfect time of year. Yep. Mid-October here, it's, it's perfect time to, to get the grass sown here. And I really love that straw machine. Yeah, that, uh, that made it quick. Yeah, and it was, well, it was easy for me. Of course, I wasn't doing it. <laughs> was it blowing right in your face all the time? No, not all the time. I have a question for you. Okay. We did some work for you about a little over a year ago. Okay, yeah. Right, and we, and we piled up some rock levees or whatever to slow down the flow of the water. How did that work out for it's you? It's worked out beautiful. The water's never left the waterway. I think more than anything, the tubes that we put in there it redirected the water. The water gets through there quicker. It's not backing up. It's not overflowing out of the rocks. It's not cutting ditches. It's not silting in. It's, wow. it's working beautifully. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear because we did have some, some concerns that it might still try to flow around the ends. No, nope. never once has went around the ends. So. No, it's worked beautifully. Well, that's great. That's yeah. great to hear. We'll be back to see this. Okay. This is the thriving metropolis of West Salem, Illinois. We're on the town square. And I think there was about eight cars went by all day long. Yeah. And every one of them stopped to see us yeah. and wave and talk to Steve a few minutes. Steve has, has built a new business, a new building for his business right here on the square in West Salem, and that just doesn't happen. Uh, when was the last, do you have any idea when the last building was built on the square? I think somebody had said it was when they built on the Village Hall, which would have been early 90s, but a brand new building, probably not since the clinic. Yeah, that would have been 80s maybe. Early 80s. Wow. It, it, rural areas at least here in Illinois, aren't doing very well. No. And uh, you're just trying to bring some business to a small town. Yeah, we are. Well, West Salem has been good to us, the surrounding area has been good to us, and you know, we, we just uh, try and give great service and branch out and people will be the path to your door. Hey, and if you uh, have been issuing questions to tractortimewithtim.com slash insurance, Steve is the man that's answering them. Yep. And he answers every single one. Sometimes even copies me on the answer. Yeah. And uh, so if, if you have insurance questions about your little tractors, about using them in your business, tractortimewithtim.com slash insurance. It's free. Yep. We're not using your information for anything else. We're just trying to help. We just feel like this is something that's important. Yeah, people a lot of times don't know where to turn. You know, we're, we're in the ag industry. That's how country came to be. So this is right up our alley, you know, these tractors all the way up to 600 horse tractors. So we, we know what we're doing. Yeah. I know that when Steve wrote our policy, the, the questions that we were asking Steve, he, he just answered just like that. When we went to other agents, they didn't even, they, they just finally just said, no, we don't want anything to do with it. Right. They just didn't understand it all. Hey, this is not a sponsored episode, but we just feel like it's important. TractorTimeWithM.com slash insurance. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with, with Tim. Tim.